Good morning everyone and welcome to Sunday School this morning. This week we're going to continue the theme of miracles and I'm going to tell you the story of Daniel in the lion's den. But first we'll just open in prayer. Father God we thank you for bringing us here safely this week and another week hopefully to meeting again in person. Open our ears and our hearts to hear your word. In your name we ask it. Amen. We're going to learn a wee bit about Daniel and I'm going to read from the Bible from Daniel 6 and I'll tell you the story just of everything behind what happened and why Daniel was put in the den with the lions. So Daniel 6. It pleased Darius, who was the king at the time, to appoint 120 satraps which were governors to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, and one of them was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the governors by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel, in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could not find corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt nor negligent. Finally, these men said, we'll never find any basis for charges against this man unless it has something to do with the law of his God. So the administrators and the satraps went as a group to the king and said, may King Darius live forever. The royal administrators and prefects and satraps and advisors and governors have all agreed that the king should issue an edict and enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or human being during the next 30 days except to you, your majesty, shall be thrown in the lion's den. Now, your majesty, issue the decree and put it in writing so it, that it cannot be altered in accordance with the law of the Medes and the Parisians which cannot be repelled. So King Darius put the decree in writing. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and he prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king and spoke to him about his royal decree. Did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any God or human except to you, your majesty, would be thrown in the lion's den? The king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and the Parisians, which cannot be repelled. Then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel and made every effort until sundown to save him. When the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, remember your majesty, that according to the law of the Medes and Parisians, no decree or edit that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order and they put Daniel, they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God whom you serve continually rescue you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and spent the night without eating, without any entertainment being brought to him and he could not sleep. At first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in his anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continue, continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in your sight nor have I done anything wrong before your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found in him because he had trusted in his God. 
At the king's command, the men who falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and their children. And before they reached the floor of the, li- the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed them with, crushed all their bones. Daniel in the lion's den is one of the most familiar stories we know in the Bible, and we'll learn it from a very young age. But even though Daniel was an old man at the time and he refused to take the easy way out and abandon God, the threat of an agonising and torturous death didn't change his trust in God. The name Daniel actually means God is my judge and his miracle, God, not men, judged Daniel and found him innocent. from Daniel and the lion's den. Things were not looking good for God's people. They had been captured and taken far from home, and now they were slaves of the king of Babylon. But God had not left his people. He was with them, and he was looking after them. Daniel loved God and obeyed God. Now God made Daniel able to understand lots of difficult things, 
So it wasn't long before the king of Babylon noticed him. King Darius liked how clever Daniel was, so he made Daniel his most important helper of all and put him in charge of lots of other helpers. But the other helpers didn't like this. They wanted the king to like them best. They wanted to get rid of Daniel. So they spied on Daniel. They tried to find things wrong with Daniel. Things they could tell the king. Things they could... But there weren't any. None. They couldn't find anything at all. Except there was just the one thing. Every day, three times a day without fail, no matter what, Daniel went to his room, closed the door, and prayed. Three times a day. Three times a day. They smiled to themselves. Let's get the king to make a law. No one is allowed to pray to anyone except to the king. Daniel won't obey this law and he will be punished. They were pleased with themselves for being so clever and hurried off to tell the king. The king liked their idea. He didn't know they were tricking him, so he made it into a law. Everyone must pray only to me. If you don't, the lions will have you for their dinner. Daniel heard this. He knew it was wrong to pray to anyone except God. He had to do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. So Daniel went to his room, closed the door, and prayed. That's just what the bad men knew Daniel would do. They skipped straight off to tell the king, Oh, your most glittering highness, your law says, does it not? that everyone must pray to you alone, sire. Yes, said the king. Oh, magisterial brightness, then correct us if we're wrong. But, but it would seem that Daniel is praying to God, not to you. The king was sad. He had been tricked. He didn't want to hurt Daniel, but he couldn't change his law. So he let the soldiers throw Daniel to the lion. May your God, who you love so much, rescue you, the king said. God can rescue him. Who? God! The king went back to his palace, but he didn't sleep that night. Not a wink. He tossed and turned until finally, at the first glimmer of dawn, he leaped out of bed and ran straight to the den. Daniel, he cried, has your God rescued you? Yes! shouted Daniel. God sent an angel to close the lion's mouth. And there, resting his head on Daniel's lap, was the biggest lion purring like a little kitten. The king brought Daniel out of the den. Look, he said, Daniel doesn't even have a scratch. The king made a new law. Daniel's God is the true God, the God who rescues. Pray to him instead. God would keep on rescuing his people, and the time was coming when God would send another brave hero who would love God and do what God said, whatever it cost him, even if it meant he would die. And together, they would pull off the greatest rescue the world has ever known. So this is where we are in God's story. God made a perfect world, but the people messed it up. They didn't always love God or each other. God had a plan to rescue his world, and a guy named Daniel got to be a part of it. Daniel was also a slave. Remember, God's special people weren't always loved by everyone. Daniel really loved God. He talked to God. And God talked to him too. God still talks to people. And Daniel listened. We can do that too. God helped Daniel understand things other people couldn't. Daniel helped the king with the king's problems. And that made the king like Daniel a lot. 
He made Daniel his number one helper, and he was in charge of lots of other people. That made some of the people jealous. They tried to get him in trouble. They were always watching, trying to catch him doing something wrong, but they couldn't. They saw him pray every day, three times a day, and they realized. Dun, dun, dun. If he was praying against the rules, they'd be sure to get Daniel in trouble. So the no good guys tricked the king and he made a rule. Hear ye, hear ye. His name was King Darius, and he made a new rule. You can't pray to anyone but me. So if anyone was caught praying to anyone but the king, they would be thrown in a pit with lions. <laughs> Hungry ones. It's good to obey the rules, but when Daniel heard this rule, he knew he couldn't obey it. So he kept right on praying to God, doing what he'd always done, three times a day. Even if it meant he would become lion food. Pretty soon, they saw him, and when they did, they told the king, which made him really sad. See. Daniel was one of his favorite helpers, and he didn't want the lions to hurt him. But he had made a rule, and he couldn't change it. So before he sent Daniel to the lion's den, he prayed, God, please rescue Daniel from the lions. The next morning, no one expected Daniel to be alive. But when the king went to check on him, he yelled, Daniel, does God rescue you? Daniel said, yes, woohoo, yay, cowabunga, awesome. An angel had closed the lion's mouth and Daniel didn't have a scratch on him. Nada, no scratch, not even one. The king made a new rule. Everyone will pray to Daniel's God.
everybody, it's time to run and go get your supplies for the craft. Hurry, run! Holy what? Run! run! What you're going to need for this craft is some colored construction paper, some white printer paper, some scissors, a white crayon, a glue stick, some watercolors, and a cup of water for the paint. Alright, I hope you got all your things ready for your craft, and we've got ours here, and we're going to make it along with you. Today in the story, uh, we learned about Daniel and how he loved God and he trusted God. Even when he was afraid, he couldn't see God, but he still trusted him. So we're going to make a craft that's going to help remind us that we can trust God no matter what. Uh, even if we're afraid or don't understand something, we can trust Him even if we can't see Him. We can trust Him. So what I want you to do first is take your white paper and your white crayon, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and I, if for the younger kids, Mommy and Daddy or a big sister or brother could write it for you, but the older ones you can write this yourself. And I want you to write on your paper, uh, pretty big, you can trust God. And then down at the bottom, Daniel 6. Okay, so let's all do that together. Okay, then we want you to take your paint and your paint brushes and you, you can do this however you want. You can make it all one solid color, you can make a rainbow, you can make it look like a puzzle piece so it'll look like a stained glass window when you're done. You just get creative however you want to do it and choose the colors you want. boys and girls. Here is Miss Emily. She's got hers and as you can see what she wrote on her paper is coming through now and um, she's going to show you how we're going to put the finishing uh, papers together here. You can do this any way you want. You can keep it a square or a rectangle. You can do an oval, round, however you choose. Or you, like I said you can make it like a stained glass window. She's going to glue the back of it and put it on her paper. So it looks like it's a framed picture. Okay, and here is the finished product. And we hope this reminds you that you can trust God no matter what. trust God is called a trust fall. Now you're going to want to have your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa help you with this. And this is how it's going to work. Your mom or dad is going to stand facing one way and you are also going to stand facing that way. But you're going to want to stand kind of out in front of them. Put your arms out in a T pose and you will fall back while your parent is staying behind you ready to catch. Trusting that they will catch you just like God always catches us. Ready, Grace? Ready? I am. You can trust God. Thanks, Kid Rock Kids, for joining us today. It was fun to be with you, even though we couldn't see you. We sure do love you and miss you. So let's close this day with prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for our Kid Rock Kids. They love you so much, and they want to learn more about you. Thank you that we can trust you, Lord, even when we can't see you, that we never need to be afraid because you're always with us. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Thank you for joining us, kids. It sure was fun. We hope to see you all next week. And remember, you can trust in God. Yeah. We can trust in God, yeah!
We can trust in God, yeah. 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 Daniel was a follower of the living God in a world where there was ungodly things happening. Temptation was always at hand and, as is the case with temptation, sometimes it's much easier to go along with the crowd and be popular. And we as Christians today, living in our culture, which is very sinful, can readily identify with Daniel. Sometimes our own personal den of lions right now can be something very, very simple, but it's something that's a big temptation for us. And our circumstances are never a reflection of how much God loves you. The key is not to put your focus on your situation, but your all powerful protector. Let's put our faith this week in God and ask him to rescue us. Finally, we'll just close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word that you give to us every week and every day. Thank you for protecting us from things and from temptation. Keep us safe till we meet again next week. In your name we ask it. Amen.